Good evening. Welcome back to Two Hopes Garage. The Camaro bonnet is still up. The Camaro engine, as you can see, has a few bits and pieces missing still. Um, so to continue where we left before, uh, the TPI runners, manifolds, etc. came off in order to let us access the EGR valve. Um, this vehicle had uh, EGR related check engine light. The previous owner uh, provided a new GM EGR valve plus gaskets etc in order to change it and get rid of the check engine light. Now the last time round we took the EGR valve out and one of the things was eagle-eyed amongst you might spot some modifications the vacuum line from the let me think the EGR solenoid to the throttle body was sitting on top of the bear with me was sitting on top of where the EGR valve body mounts to the manifold and had burned through um, in the absence of being able to buy a whole new line, um, I've spliced a section of vacuum line in there um, and hopefully that will resolve the problem. One slight misgiving I have is that the internal diameter of the new vacuum line, I might be wrong with these numbers, is 75 thousandths of an inch. Whereas the internal diameter of the existing vacuum line is 97 thousandths of an inch. In spite of them both being the same, or supposedly the same external diameter. Um, they're actually slightly different on external diameter. I have spliced in this section here and put a couple of rubber connectors on. I've also put a little bit, it's a bit messy, um, of black silicon on to try and mitigate any slight leaks from the connectors. It can only be better than what was on there before. Um, and we'll route it slightly differently. I've not quite decided what we get in order to try and stop it from contacting the base of the EGR valve. So that's where we're at. Um, what we have on the bench, a slightly messy bench, excuse me, that's come out a wee bit. So let me see if you can find it. There is the old EGR uh, vacuum line. As you can see, it's Pretty badly melted. Um, you might also be able to see the internal diameter of that line as opposed to the internal diameter of its replacement. So hopefully the uh, there will still be a vacuum to the throttle body and everything will work the way it should. Um, what we do have is, this is the old GM um, EGR valve. It's 32 years old, it's got a wee bit of carbon on it. Um, it actually seems to work okay. However, as the item is off, and as we have a new one sitting ready to go on, we will put the new one on, a bit less carbon, and hopefully the, well, not hopefully the, the rubber diaphragm within should be in better condition. So we'll go with a fit on one of those. Um, we'll see if we can get the camera mounted up. And um, yeah, progress the fit. Brand new gasket. Um, the old gasket is actually, the old gasket is actually in really good condition. Almost so good one could use that again. However, we'll go with the new one 
Although, the new one doesn't feel quite as good. But we'll fit a new gasket, because we always fit a new gasket. So, let me get the camera mounted. Somewhere. Um, let me think. Let's have a look. Where's going to work? By now, you should be used to my comedy camera angles, where the... Uh, Camera falls over at the drop of a hat. Let's go with that. Let's put the lighting up a wee bit. And um, yeah, we'll pop a new gasket on. Which I believe is this item here. Not sure if there's an up or a down to these. Yeah. We'll see how we go. So. That goes on there, like so. We'll sit the new valve in place. Hopefully everything's clean. Yep. New valve just sits there like so. Now, question is, what way are we going to root it? Uh, the question also is, is that, do you know what? Let's swap this round because I think what's happening here is there'll be a whole lot of shots of my sleeve. And that is not helpful to anyone at all, really. So let me, bear with me, see if I can get the camera in a suitable EGR style position. That might not be too bad. That might not be too bad at all. So yeah, we're just trying to mitigate any burning of the new vacuum line. Now, in this position, it's it kind of touches against the the uh, EGR valve. Previously, let's move it across. It sat over here. Now that is right across there again. I think we're going to go with this over here. Out of the way. Next thing is. Let's get a couple of bolts in. This gasket, I have to say, seems to be quite baggy. Never mind. So we've got our original bolts with the original walking washers. I'll drop them in, like so. Let's see if we can get the gasket out of the way. You can definitely feel the gasket. It's definitely in the way. I feel this might be a one-size-fits-all gasket where that size fits absolutely nothing. There we are. I'll get them started. Now... These bolts um, have a torque figure of, off the top of my head, from the manual, have a torque figure of 16 foot pounds, I believe. Or 22 Newton Maestros. Newton meters. We'll call it Newton Maestros because I've always liked the sound of Newton Maestros more than Newton Meters. The, um, these bolts are not the most accessible. Um, if you saw the last video, you'd have seen what I had to make uh, in order to loosen them off. Uh, a socket's not happening. Uh, if you've got a torque adapter, 
I think possibly they might be the best solution. Uh, I've got a couple of bent spanners, which definitely worked for loosening them off. Uh, for the purposes, oh dear, for the purposes of tightening them up. Unfortunately, with the spanners, I am not going to be able to torque these bolts. Um, so we're going to go down the route of just making them nice and tight uh, without going crazy because I definitely don't want to strip the threads on the uh, on the manifold. That would be a terrible state of affairs. So this is the, the bent spanner that I used to loosen the back one. It's definitely not the easiest to get on. So we'll get that we'll get that nipped up. These bolts are three eighths. And like I say, get torqued to sixteen foot pounds. Which is actually quite tight for 22 newton meters. So we'll tighten them down a bit. Might use a little bit of leverage to tighten that one down finally. That rear one is as tight as it's going for the moment. And we'll get another specially modified item for the front. Um, there's a spanner we uh, used for the front. I keep saying we in these videos, like it's a royal we, it's just me. Um, plus, all you lovely, all you lovely uh, viewers that are watching. All three or four of you. So yeah, we'll tighten that up a bit. Like I say, it should be 22 Newton Maestros. As long as it's nice and tight, uh, hopefully it'll serve its purpose. The um, This definitely seems to be sitting a bit more out of harm's way. It's not the best bend radius on the uh, on the throttle body but it's pretty similar to what it was before so uh, yeah we'll see how that goes so bear with me I'm going to pop a glove on because I'll tell you why the uh, chrome plating on the um, spanner is flaking off it's a bit nasty when I took these off, uh, the bolts that is, I had to use a set of mole grips, uh, vice grips uh, on the forward spanner uh, to get that loosened off and to use a screwdriver as a bit of leverage to get the, uh, the rear spanner loosened off. So. We could down a similar route. We may do. So there we go. Forward one on again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. That's how we roll there, isn't it? Silly me. That's pretty tight. I don't think. That's going anywhere soon. What we will do with the rear one, we can't quite get on that quite as well, is we'll get a handy dandy screwdriver or ice pick. Ice pick will do. And we just use, just use that to uh, lever. Uh, oops, this bolt is not the best. 
uh, for access. So what are we doing? What are we going? Right, it's going loose. Let's go tight instead. So let's turn that around like so. Mm -hmm. Not a massive fan of this one at all. But never mind. And can you bear the suspense about whether the size pick is going to go into my hand or not? Oh dear. Not ideal. Not a grand state of affairs in here at all. So the um, the line that I used is a Dorman, if I remember correctly, four seven four one seven hard emissions tubing. Now, I'm not over familiar with. Oh, that's tightening up nicely. With what the vacuum line availability is uh, in terms of the ones that were originally fitted. I'm guessing as the car is 32 years old, it's probably a case of just splicing in whatever you can get hold of. Um, and I wanted to keep this as original as possible. Jeez, oh. It would be nice if we could get a torque wrench. I'm a big fan of torquing things. Um, I generally torque everything. And uh, this, this just doesn't sit well with me at all. The old two white knuckles job. I think that should suffice. I'll check the forward one now, just to, to see if I can get a little bit more than that. And I think we'll uh, call them tight. Uh, definitely not keen on stripping out the uh, threads in the, in the uh, manifold. That would be a bad state of affairs. Uh, let me get this right now. Yeah, we get a bit more than that. That'll probably do. So in addition to that, I also have to, well, let's make sure I get the right one. I also have to fit the vacuum line. Oh, let's hope we've not trapped that. So that, I believe, goes on there like so. And that, with a bit of luck, will uh, we'll get rid of our EGR derived check engine light. Yeah. So, we've got line coming from the EGR solenoid to the EGR valve and we've got the line going from the EGR solenoid with the spliced in section to the bottom of the throttle body on the driver's side and uh, that's it, two, two, three, eight bolts torqued to 16 foot pounds or 22 newton maestros um, or in this case tightened up till it feels like they're pretty tight without stripping out the head. Um, we'll call that we'll call that the video for the moment. I'm just gonna have a wee look and see what route I'm going down next. Um, probably fit the TPI runners. I'm just gonna have a look over everything and uh, if there's anything of any note, I'll be sure to show you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh, there we go. Well, one EGR valve is fitted, and that only took 19 minutes and 36 seconds.